If you interested for more videos like that, don't skip this video and to watch end. I describe about whole lifespan of sundews plants on our earth. There are over 100 species of sundews that thrive in temperate and tropical regions across the world. Some varieties require cross-pollination and reproduce through seeds, while many self-pollinate. The group is divided into several habits or growth forms. Temperate sundews the species appears as a tight cluster of unfurled leaves known as a hibernaculum in dormancy period in winter. All North American and European species fall under this group. Subtropical sundews the species sustain vegetative growth all throughout the year in uniform or nearly uniform climatic conditions. Pygmy sundews A group of around 40 Australian species, pygmy sundews, are distinguished by miniature growth, the formation of gemmy for asexual reproduction, and dense formation of hairs in the crown center. The hairs protect the plants from intense summer sun. The species form the subgenus Bryostrum. Tuberous sundews There are around 50 Australian species, forming an underground tuber to survive the extremely dry summers of their habitat, re-emerging in the autumn. Tuberous sundews are classified into two groups, which form rosettes and the ones that form climbing or scrambling stems. The species comprise the subgenus Ergalium. Sunlight. The plant needs partial to full sunlight. Temperature. The ideal temperature requirement for the plant is 16 to 24 degrees Celsius. Watering. Sundews require frequent watering. Soil. Soil must have acidic pH. Use a 1-1 mix of peat moss and sand perlite for the plant. Fertilizer. The plant feeds on insects and does not require fertilizer. As the name suggests, these sundews are found in temperate climates primarily across North America and Europe. This means that they must survive the winter somehow, right? They do this by going dormant during the winter and dying down to a small bud called hibernacula. They then regrow back in the spring. The thing that makes a sundew, well a sundew, is the presence of some form of stalk with mucilaginous glands on it. In simple terms, a sticky tentacle. The dew also smells sweet, so insects are lured, trapped in the sticky secretion, and subsequently digested by enzymes. You might ask yourself why? Can't these plants just get their nutrients from the soil like everyone else? The answer is no, these plants- In all seriousness, the truth is the carnivorous nature of sundews and any other carnivorous plant comes from a lack of nutrients in the soil where they are found. So they have evolved to make up for that deficiency by having carnivorous tendencies, thus getting nutrients from unfortunate insects. You might picture in your head a dark, dingy swamp or bog when you think of where you might find sundews or other carnivorous plants, like Venus flytraps and pitcher plants in nature. In reality, these places get a lot of sun. You'll want to do some research on your specific species of sundew, as well as the climate in your area, but a minimum of four to six hours is required for your plant to be happy. So, a very sunny windowsill will work if you don't want to keep them outside. If you do have a nice place to keep them outside, you'll want to consider how cold it gets in your area. Many common subtropical sundews like Drosera capensis can handle light frosts, but generally prefer it to stay above freezing during the winter.